Hey friends, it's Anna here. I hope you all are doing well today and getting to experience some warmth and sunlight wherever you are with summer just around the corner. In today's video, I'm so excited to share with you guys my June bullet journal setup. I'm definitely embracing the sun and summer vibes for this one, so I hope you like it. We're starting off as always with my calendar page. I'm using my black Tombow brush pen color N15 to write June up top with my basic calligraphy font. Below the title, I'm drawing my calendar outline with this Stedler fine liner pen with 0.3 millimeters. I'll leave a link to that and all my supplies in the description box below. I draw my calendars starting on Monday and each box in the calendar is 5x5 five five squares in my A5 dotted notebook. This journal is from Shop Amanda Rach Lee. Amanda is another bullet journalist on YouTube and she has awesome content on her channel and a great stationery shop. This journal I think was from her 2021 collection. So I added the days of the week up top with my alphabet stamp set and now I'm using some yellow gouache paint to add some yellow circles in the top right corners. This will be a color backdrop for when I write the dates in each box. So while that dries, I'm going to get started on the art and I chose sunflowers for this month's theme. These are actually my all-time favorite flower. It's kind of strange when I think about it because I generally don't love the color yellow and especially not this bright of a yellow, but I don't know, something about sunflowers just brings me so much joy. I'd also love to hear from you all what your favorite flower is, so if you'd like, let me know in the comments. I don't know why, but I feel like knowing someone's favorite flower is a really fun fact. So I'm drawing these by first adding an initial layer of full petals and then going back and adding a second and sometimes third layer of petals poking out in the back. I'm drawing two flowers here on the right side and this top one is facing towards the left page like that's the direction the sun is coming from. Sunflowers have pretty thick stems and larger leaves that are almost in a heart shape and can be a little jagged on the edges. After getting the initial outlines of the flowers, I'm now going back to add a few detail lines to give the drawing some texture. I add just a few lines from the bottom center of each front petal and then some lines following the borders of the petals in the back. And then I'm also filling in the details for the leaves by adding some veins. Adding these little extra contour lines to the flowers really takes the drawing from a cartoonish doodle look to something more beautiful, I think. For the center of the flowers, I'm filling it in with lots of tiny dots and I also add a ring of bigger circles in the middle just because I've seen some sunflowers drawn this way and I think it looks nice. I'm adding another quarter of a sunflower in the top left corner to balance out the page. This one is just facing straight on and the stem will be trailing down the left side of the page. Next, we're going to add some color. Like I mentioned, I'm using gouache paint. All the colors you'll see are from my Chocola set. I pretty much alternate between using markers and paint in my journal. I'm still figuring out which medium I like best, or maybe I'll just forever continue using a combination of them. But I usually turn to paint when I don't have a marker that fits the exact color I want. And I really wanted a yellow that was in between a highlighter color and a really dark mustard color. I got this shade by mixing my yellow ochre and Naples yellow, and I like how it still captures the brightness of the sunflowers, but also is still an earthy yellow and not too orangey in tone either. I'm using a mix of the burnt umber and ochre for the brown in the middle of the flowers, 
and I'll go over that ring in the center with a little extra paint to make it a bit darker. For the green, I mixed my deep green, yellow ochre, and burnt umber to create this warm tone. I think that since I brought in some of the colors that I used for the petals and middle of the flower, the yellow ochre and burnt umber, to get this green, it pairs really nice with the flowers. I thought the painting looked fine here, but that it could look even better if I added some more depth to the flowers with a darker yellow. So I'm going over some of those detail lines in the middle of the petals and some of the edges on the back of the petals with just my pure yellow ochre paint. And I really like the effect that it gave the flowers. The last step is going back to the calendar and filling in the dates in the top right corners. And here's our final calendar spread. Next up, we have a spread that I'm titling Notes for June. I'm writing this with my smaller Tombow Calligraphy brush pen, the soft tip pen. If you've been following along with me, you'll be familiar with this spread. It's basically where I do my planning and also reflecting for the month. So below the title, I'm drawing three boxes, two on the left page and one on the right. The top box will be for intentions. These are just general priorities or thoughts on how I want to frame my month. For example, for June, I think I'm going to write something like, focus energy on work and minimize personal chores or projects. Because I'm anticipating June will be a heavier work month for me, I do contract work as a dietitian and I'm starting some new contracts. So with this intention, I'm trying to remind myself that it's okay to spend more of my energy than normal on work this month and it's probably not the best time to take on huge projects around the house. The low intentions, I have a box for tasks, which are just the general to-dos I have for this month. And on the right page, I have this bigger space for reflections. I fill that in at the end of the month with my thoughts on how the month went and any musings on how I might want to improve or change future months. I stamp the titles for those sections with my alphabet stamp set. And now I'm adding some more sunflower drawings to the margins. On the bottom right, I went for the top half of a flower facing straight on, using the exact same drawing techniques as on the previous page. And in the top left, I'm just drawing a stem with some leaves, since there's not that much space in this area. I know I've mentioned this in other setups, but I like making sure the margins aren't too cluttered because it helps me focus better on the parts of the page that I actually write on. I accidentally didn't film myself painting, but I used the same paints as before to add the color. And to finish off this spread, I'm also adding some yellow borders to the three boxes, just to make them stand out a little more. And here is the complete Notes for June spread. Next up, we have my habit and mood trackers. We're going to start with habits on the left page. I'm using the same calligraphy font to write the title at the top with my larger black brush pen. Below, I'm drawing five mini calendars, one each for the five habits I'm going to track. You'll also be familiar with this spread if you've seen any of my previous setups. This is the same format I've been using all year. But basically, each day of the month has its own square, and if I complete the habit on that day, I'll mark it by adding a little X. I'm labeling the days of the week on top of each calendar, and then I'll write the names of each habit below in a cursive font. Something else I've started doing is writing my specific goal for each habit on the right side of each calendar. I think that's helpful to see because, for example, my goal for vitamins is only three to four times per week. So if I see that, I don't feel like I'm falling short if not every day has an X filled in. I'm going to use that space in the bottom right to add another sunflower. 
I'm drawing the flower facing left, kind of like on my calendar page, as if the sun was towards the top left corner of the page. I tried to create the effect by drawing the petals on the bottom right a little squatter, and the petals in the top left are more extended, and also the middle of the flower is more of an oval than a circle. Fun fact about sunflowers, those tiny buds in that middle section are called disc florets or ray florets. I just found this out when I was researching how to properly name the components of the flower, but the disc florets grow in a spiral formation that makes up that large middle portion and are technically each their own flower. I think most people, like I did, think of the sunflower with the groups of florets and surrounding petals as one flower, but it's actually hundreds. Florets are also what eventually mature into sunflower seeds once the petals and other parts of the flower have died back. So as a dietitian, I definitely talk about the nutritional benefits of sunflower seeds. They have lots of great vitamins, minerals, antioxidants. So it's cool to now know how the seeds are harvested as well. But getting back to bullet journaling, I'm adding the color with my gouache using the same shades as before. I also added that yellow highlight to the days of the week on each calendar. Honestly, just because I thought it would make the page more visually interesting, and I think it also helps separate out the different areas. Now, moving on to my mood tracker, I'm using the fine tip point of my large black Tombow pen to outline the title. I'm using this serif style font to avoid using too much of the same typeface, and then I'll fill in the bolder parts of each letter with the brush tip side of the same pen. My mood tracker is really simple, I use the line a day system, so you'll see I'll draw a column divider on the left side of the page, on the left column I number the days of the month, and on the right column I have the space to describe my mood in whatever way I like. Sometimes I just write one word, sometimes I write multiple moods and if there was a particular reason behind the mood. And I brought up last month that the only thing I didn't like about this system is that you can't glance at it at the end of the month and immediately see any patterns, like you can sometimes with a one color a day mood tracker. So thank you to my friend Kalina for commenting on that video and giving the idea to highlight moods in each line with a color-coded key. So I'm going to test this out, and at the bottom of the page you'll see me make a key corresponding certain colors to certain moods, and I can use that to highlight those moods if I write them in my line a day. So hopefully that will give me the best of both worlds, a quick summary of my mood by glancing at the colors, but also I'll have a more in-depth summary available if I want to read through all the lines. And if any of you are watching have a habit or mood tracker system that you love or suggestions to share, definitely leave a comment with those. I always love trying out new spreads and that's one of my favorite things about watching bullet journal videos and being in the Bujo community online is you can learn so much from what other people do in their journals. So let me know your ideas in addition to your favorite flower. Don't forget about the flower because I want to know that too. So as you can see, I just added another vine of leaves with the space on the left side of the page. And these leaves are all kind of facing different directions too. Some of the leaves are bent or curled just to add some visual variety. And here's how my tracker spreads turned out. On to my final spread for the setup, which is my first weekly for June. First, I'm writing the title in the top, middle, week 22 of the year. Please ignore how ugly my calligraphy is here. <laughs> I write the week in calligraphy literally every week in my journal, and it's the one word that I think I'm worst at writing. Especially for this week, I just don't like how this looks, but that happens. <laughs> I'm doing this weekly setup a little different than how I normally do. I usually use a total of four pages for each week, and each day has its own half-page column. But I am reaching the end of this journal. June is the last month that will be in this journal before I migrate to a new one for the second half of the year. 
So I do have a stationery haul video coming up where I talk about my next journal and some other supplies I've gotten, plus a video about setting up my second journal for the year, so keep an eye out for those. Back to this journal, once I got to this point, I just had eight pages left, so literally the perfect amount to use just two pages per weekly spread for June. I'm creating eight boxes, which will each be for one day of the week, and the last box will be for my weekly task list. I labeled each day using my stamp set. My first impression of this spread is I don't know if this is going to be enough space for me, but I am curious to give this a try for the full month of June. I might surprise myself, maybe I don't need as much space as I think, and can even save pages in future journals by cutting back my weeklies. I'll let you guys know how this went for me in my July setup. I'm decorating the pages with two half flowers on either side of the title. One thing I wanted to mention was it worked really well to paint directly into my journal for this setup. The journal does have thick pages, 160 GSM, but even so, when you're using paint, you do have to be careful of the water. But since the painting portions were really simple and didn't require a lot of layers for reworking the paint, there were barely any spots on my pages that got wrinkled. And the spots that did, it was really just that I had more water on my brush than I needed. I always appreciate when I can work directly in the journal instead of creating on a separate sheet of mixed media paper and then pasting it in. So after finishing up the flowers, I'm underlining the days of the week to bring in a little green. I'm also desperately trying to make this title look better unsuccessfully. But that completes my June setup. Let's do a final flip through. I'm really happy overall with how these spreads turned out. I hope you enjoyed this setup as well. I really appreciate you being here, especially if you made it to the end of the video. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. Feel free to subscribe for more bullet journal content. I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day.